Hello, hello! Welcome everybody to another wonderful Thunderbird live hacking session. As usual, my name is Alex. Good morning, good evening, good night, whatever time it is. Uh, are you guys okay? How's everybody doing? Guys and girls, hopefully we're gonna have some ladies also today. Um, yeah, how's everybody doing? Is it good? What are you guys doing? What are you guys up to? other than just watching a silly Italian developer coding on uh, Thunderbird. Uh, say hi on the chat, hello Alessandro, hello Dan. Uh, how's it going Dan? Welcome, welcome. Good evening from Germany, hello. Hi Veris, hey Veris. <laughs> it's always beautiful trying to pronounce your names or nicknames because it shows how Terrible I am with languages and different names, but yay! Uh, oh, lots of people already uh, showing up uh, on this beautiful Thursday morning here in Vancouver, Canada. Uh, weather is horrible as usual, <laughs> it's cloudy. Uh, we had a little bit of sun yesterday, but it, it's mostly just rainy as hell. Um, yeah, that's it. I don't know if you can see, I have some skin marks on my face because I went grocery shopping this morning and I wore uh, I was wearing my N95 mask like super tight and it always leaves some marks on my skin so I was trying to stretch them out but yeah I don't, it's okay it's gonna be fine I'm beautiful it's fine I'm gorgeous oh hello hello um, hey Alex hey Alexander <laughs> yeah we share the same name um, I'm eating Hawaiian pizza. Danny, uh, you're banned. I'm sorry. How dare you saying to an Italian that you're eating Hawaiian pizza? What is wrong with you, Danny? Like what? God, <laughs> this is terrible. You just ruined my day. That's it. The stream is over. I'm not going to just sit. Just going to sip my coffee. Fine. It's okay. Parsa, hello, hello. Okay, so uh, let me show you what are we going to do today. First of all, in the last session, we started working a little bit on some updates on the attachment pane. And uh, I uh, kept working a little bit. I had a working prototype that I submitted for some feedback. I got some feedback back, so we're going to work on that. I'm going to show you all the things that I did so far on that little thingy. Uh, 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 attachment, 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 refactor, improve the attachment pane. There you go. So let me change the patches. Here's the attachment. It's the top one. And then we can push this patch of the attachment and build this beautiful little Thunderbird iteration here. Danny, there's nothing to laugh about Hawaiian pizza, really, like, sorry, sorry, <laughs> you got negative points now, man. Uh, okay, so uh, let me show you what I did. Oh, something very, very nice uh, just landed on, on Thunderbird on daily, which I've been working on for months, which is the ability to show multiple folder modes in the folder panes before it was only available like you were able only to see all the folders or all your favorites or the recents now instead you can uh, just see everything all together if you go into toolbars and you enable the folder pane toolbar you have this little thing here that allows you to enable or disable you're going to show all your folders unified and read and toggle the compact mode uh, and then you can hide the toolbar of course so now you, I, it's great i love it because you have the ability to customize your view of the folders i've been working on this for two months it's insane there are some uh, test failures that uh, if i have time if i manage to do it, i want to show you how we do our testing our uni testing how to fix the tests uh but yeah so um, before I continue, as usual, you can write uh, whatever you want in the chat, other just be respectful and responsible like a normal adult. Uh, but you can write all the questions, all the things that you want. If you want to interject and suggest something, write whatever. I'm going to work a little bit and then sometimes I do some breaks and I read, I scroll back up and I read all the messages. So if you have something to say, just write in the chat. If, that, if I don't answer right away, don't worry, I will get back to you. But what I did 
with the attachment pane. So there you go, this is the Compose window. Uh, I move the attachment button to the bottom here and we have this bar, uh, this gray bar that it kinda, it kinda looks awful <laughs> because we have the gray attachment bar and then the status bar. The status bar currently is empty, but it usually it's used to show the language selector if you have multiple languages uh, installed on your operating system. Uh, when you save the draft, the, the draft is very uh, like heavy, it's very big. We show a progress bar underneath. Uh, also, if you use encryption, OpenPGP, we show like uh, require encryption. Yeah, you see we show the encryption status of the thing. So the status bar is kind of used uh, for a bunch of different things. So we're planning to remove it and integrate all those elements inside the UI in a better way, but for now it's there. So having this double bar at the bottom it already kind of looks weird. Then we have this kind of like mechanism that if I press Alt, the button Alt and M, it opens and closes like toggles and focuses the attachment like bucket. And you can see it opens it up. But if it's opened and you don't press again Alt M, you cannot focus on like you cannot close it. There's no way to close this, which is super annoying. So the other thing is we have this thing that when you press Alt M, it focuses on the bucket. If you press Enter, it opens the okay, you want to upload an attachment. So we pick an attachment, whatever. But if I press again, closes it up. Now that we have an attachment, we have this little uh, counter of the attachments and the uh, full uh, file size of all your attachments, which is super handy. This full bar turns clickable. So now you can click to open and close it, toggle it. It's not just the chevron, but everything it's clickable. But the weird thing is that now that I hit Alt M, instead of like before focusing on the full bucket, it just focuses on the first element. So if I press enter, it basically asks me to download the attachment that I just uploaded. So this is already weird. Uh, my proposal would be to alt M just focuses on the button. So you have the focus on the button and you can press enter and upload whatever and then having another accelerator key to open and close the uh, attachment pane so this is what i did and and it kind of works you can also like drag and drop uh, attachments on the bar and they get uploaded so it's it's kind of okay uh, the two main issues that were highlighted from these is first even if you don't have any attachment here this bar, it's always visible. And when you, as you can see, when you delete an attachment, it just stays there. Like you cannot collapse it. So this needs to change. First, this bar needs to be collapsible, not just with the keyboard shortcut, but also with mouse interaction. The other thing is that if you don't use the attachments that often like i personally write a lot of emails for work but i don't have many attachments because we use other websites to share links uh, all our patches are on bugzilla so we don't share attachments via email this bar occupies a lot of space especially if you are on a small laptop or a small screen and you need more vertical space and you don't have enough vertical space to resize these these takes up a lot of space, especially in the message compose area, which is super annoying. So the proposal here in uh, the uh, discard, all the changes. Oh, I got a request for review. Look how, look how beautiful this might be. Okay. Um, okay, good. Awesome. It was approved. Uh, the thing, what I was, what I was saying, what I was saying, what I was saying. Um, yeah. So the feedback that I got, where this one first, yeah, I, I uploaded the patch and I gave an overview of all the things that it works and all the things that are kind of shifty, kind of like don't work that well. And the feedback overall was, yeah, the uh, big toolbar is always there at the bottom. Uh, another user suggested maybe we could move and have the attachment button floating, like one of those material theme thing um, also here. So, the 
the thing that I want to try today, I want to try to put back the button in the header area and see how it feels to have the button, the attachment button in the toolbar, the main top toolbar. And then when you click the attachments pane open at the bottom and then change the accelerator in order to only focus on the button. So Alt M only should focus on the button and then having another accelerator to open and close the attachment um, bucket. So having these two accelerators that work differently and all the other good stuff. So let's 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 see what we can do here. Um, let's open Messenger, Compose, uh, no, no, XHTML. Boom. Okay. So we have the toolbar button that we implemented here in the attachment area right above the status bar, blah, 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 attachment view, attachment toolbar, toolbar button, the button attach. So this one, instead of deleting it entirely, I want to comment it out. But the comment doesn't work that way. I have to manually write this comment here because the file doesn't recognize comment because of the tags up there. And then we have these other um, toolbar button that we removed at the top, if I'm not wrong, button attach. Um, here it is, man, about to attach button label. We had another one that we removed. Yeah, there you go. Uh, I have this one at the top area with the separator. Uh, address button, I toggle address pick. Yeah, okay. Th I can uh, remove the comment so it will appear once again. And of course, we have to compile because we changed the XHTML structure here. Uh, 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 okay, so, oh, a couple of messages here. Let me, uh, I already finished compiling. Having a, a fast CPU is not fair because I cannot use the compile time to <laughs> just answer some comments. So here, uh, Alexander says, LOL. Uh, Payush says, subscriber from the last four years when WordPress was popular. Good stuff. WordPress is still popular, but yeah, we are diversifying a little bit here. <laughs> um, Himan Shu asks, are you using Elementor? Yes. Uh, no, because um, I built a new computer and I'm using Pop! OS now because I needed the Ubuntu base 2004 and I needed to update the kernel to 5.10 because the 5.10 kernel Linux has full compatibility with the new AMD 5000 chipset series. So I have a 5950X and a Radeon 5700 XT. So I needed that type of kernel to be updated and these Ubuntu base uh, LTS distribution. So probably I will switch back to Elementor US once um, Elementor US 6 is released. I have Elementor US on my laptop to, to continue Akira and all the other apps. Uh, Kwabe, without your 2015 WordPress tutorial, I wouldn't be where I am today. So let me say thank you. Oh, Kwabe, they, whoa, amazing. Yeah, good to hear. I'm, I'm glad that my tutorial uh, have been helpful for you. Yeah, there you go. Super chat him. No, you don't have to super chat him. You, you don't have to give me any money. It's fine. You're, the fact that, yeah, the fact that you're writing these things and you're still following today, it's it's amazing. So thank you. Um, your VS Code theme, uh, Parsa. I'm using Material theme. Uh, oof. Color theme. I'm using Community Material theme High Contrast. That's what I'm using. That is just nothing, nothing too crazy. But yeah, we compiled. So we can run our. Freshly compiled thing, and then we can, oh, more things, local cache, uh, here. So here we have the attach button that it's right here. Uh, and I think this, like the, yeah, the icon here, it's missing because I changed a bunch of things. So don't worry, we can, I changed the CSS for the other icon, but it, it's okay. 
no, nothing to worry about. Um, if we do Alt M, yeah, it opens and closes the button at the bottom, so it shouldn't happen. So Alt M, first thing, it should focus. But if we click here and we upload something, now the attachment bar appears and the attachment bar can be open and collapse. Of course, we need some CSS styling because it's too squished. But then the other thing is that if we don't have any attachment, the bar should disappear. So we need to do a bunch of things. So first of all, let's fix this because I changed some CSS here. Uh, so the toolbar button that I changed here is the button attached, but the button attached, I renamed it into button attached with these other ID because we're trying to keep it consistent. Like the ID names should have like a camel case uh, naming convention and then classes should have like all lowercase separated by dashes. Um, so yeah, we're trying to keep it consistent that way. Okay, button attached. So if we, by doing this, if we uh, compile super quickly, and once again, we see we should have the little icon. We don't, why? button attached. Do we have another button attached here? Okay, so instead of doing that, let's change the ID button attach. Oh, there you go. Button attached. Okay, this is the ID that I want to change. Okay, we're going to deal with the fact that this is not appearing later because since it's a toolbar button, the ID of the toolbar button is saved in the visibility of the tool. So if we change the ID, we're going to crush everything. So we don't want to do that. Um, yeah, the beauty of <laughs> using, uh, saving the preference of the toolbar for the users. If we change the ID, uh, the toolbar button would disappear. So we need to keep it for now. But now we have it and we still have. OK, great. So a little bit of styling on this toolbar, I want to give a uh, padding in line because this is too attached. I don't like it. We're going to do a bunch of things all together here. So change to the messenger compose window and I'm going to select this toolbar do, 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 toolbox. There you go. Toolbar compose toolbar to an ID class current themable full compose toolbar tool. We don't have an ID for this. Okay. So we can use these and I can give uh, if I add um, also this doesn't have padding in line. So this thing should have a uh, padding in line three pixel at least because these has to have a nice separation okay this is better good okay so we can grab this compose toolbar too and in the messenger compose.css yes here we have the compose toolbox toolbar uh, where is it compose toolbox toolbar okay we can write it right after here the compose toolbar 2 has to have a padding in line of three pixel. Oops, up, boom. Okay. So first fix thing. Then first, this little thing should show when the tool tooltip appears at an attachment. It should also show the uh, keyboard shortcut to focus on this, which in our case is Alt M. And Alt M, as I said, shouldn't open the bucket, but should focus on the toolbar button. So we should have a focus there. Okay, so let's change this. Let's do it. Let's close these. What do you guys think? Do you think it's a good approach? It's a good solution? Let me know if you disagree. 
don't agree, disagree, this is terrible, I don't know, I'm just experimenting here. And it's all trial and error here. Mostly error, less trials, more, more errors. <laughs> oh yeah, okay, so another interesting thing that uh, we're doing in Thunderbird, uh, we are inheriting from Mozilla, but we're doing in Thunderbird, which is great, is the fact that we are um, using Fluent for translation. And Fluent, it's amazing because up until now here, we had all these um, DDT, DTD and properties declarations. So these were defining the label and tooltip text from these two thingies here. Uh, you can see, yes, we have the messenger compose DTD and we have the attach here. And then we have the attach tooltip to in the same file. Okay, add an attachment. We don't want to use these. We want to use Fluent. We have this new wonderful file, messenger compose.ftl, which allows us to do a lot of cool things. First of all, the declaration of whatever we want to do, like this is the ID of our translatable string, we can define all the parameters that we want. So in our case here, for example, appeal has a label that is this, it can have an access key that is this other variable. We have conditional values. So we can, instead of define multiple, defining multiple strings and changing the strings based off, we have one attachment, two attachments, blah, blah, blah. We can change this based on the amount that we pass. So we say that the value of this string, if the value passed is one, it's attachment. If it's not one, so it's other, so it's two, three, whatever, we use attachments, which is great. And then we have the access key, which is the M, and then we use the key toggle attachment pane, which is the access key. So we need to change this. But first of all, we need to define a new ID for this button. So in our case, it's gonna be something like that. Let's put it right here. Uh, attachment button. Uh, one little thing, not not little, but one important thing of Fluent is that all these name, like the string names or the ID of the translatable strings, has to be have to be unique. Because it doesn't matter if your string is defined on a file uh, and then you have the same string defined on another file. If the two IDs are identical, there's going to be a conflict. Like these have to be unique. So it's always better to have this type of name like attachment bucket count or key toggle attachment pane. It's better to have long IDs instead of like attachment button. It's a very like generic ID that might cause some conflict. So these like peel tooltip not in address book, they're very like cumbersome, but it's it's good because at least we know that we won't have any conflict and it's gonna be easier to uh, maintain a uniqueness of this. So uh, we can use these as uh, toolbar button attach, toolbar button attach, <laughs> toolbar button attachment, something like this. And we can say that the, what are we using here? We're using label, the tooltip text. The label is equal to attach. No attachment, just attach. And then the tooltip text, it's equal to, uh, what was the tooltip text? Add an attachment here, add an attachment, okay. Add an attachment and then we put in the parentheses like the alt plus uh, M, which is the shortcut that we're using. But there's another cool thing that we can do here. Alt plus M works only on Linux and Windows. On Mac OS, the alt button is actually the option. So we can also have a condition here based on the platform that we're using. If you're on Mac OS or Windows or Linux, we can change the type of accelerator that we're using. So in our case, first of all, we already have the M defined here in the access key, but here key toggle attachment pane. We can use these as, we can use these because the attachment bucket M is defined here. Let's write it there for now, it's fine. So 
This one has to change if you're on macOS, has to be option with the option icon. So we can change, we have something like that, like show message uh, security, show message security. Yeah, we have this example. For example, here, this is another translatable screen uh, string. The message security button has a title that based on the platform, if you're on macOS, it shows these. Eh? Look at beautiful. Command, option, and then the key that we want to use in this case is S. For other, for Linux and Mac, uh, for Linux and Windows, we can use Control Alt Plus, blah blah blah. So let's copy this thing because this is gonna be beautiful. Uh, sorry, I shouldn't do this. So we can in the tooltip text here, we can paste it, and we can do add an attachment. And it's only alt and let's copy this access key even if it's lowercase but we're gonna change that later and here we need to adjust the option because that's what we do and then add an attachment we repeat the same string and this is perfect because these in this way translators can change these uh, key if it's not M, it doesn't match or whatever, uh, can be changed to whatever letter matches their translation of the word attachment. I don't know if it makes sense, but yeah, it's okay. Um, okay, so we saved these. Uh, so now we have this toolbar button attachment and we can do like a global search and see and be sure that we haven't used it already so it's unique now we, do, we have these fluent string ID the way to add it to our file is very very simple so we can delete label and tooltip and we can just add an attribute which is called data l10 ID and then we pass the ID of our attachment so if we save these I think I did it right and I didn't break anything but I probably broke something uh, we can track what is going on here. Run DB. Okay. You. Boom. Attach. Tooltip. Add an attachment. Alt plus M. Yay! Cool! And of course, if we are on macOS, it would uh, show the um, option name. But here, I don't like that it's lowercase. I want an uppercase and so these attachment bucket count, attachment bucket count, I don't want the access key of the attachment bucket count, I want to change these. So the attachment, the key target attachment pane, where is this used? It is used in the key attachment toggle, okay. So another thing that we're doing here, we're using the key, this is an XUL tag that allows us to specify a shortcut key, but it like we're moving away from this because these are not editable by the user. There's no way we will be able to implement uh, like customizable shortcut map or something if we keep using this key because these are static and it's it's terrible to use. Um, also the condition, yeah, control for macOS and alt for Yeah, this is not great. Okay, uh, so we can, let's remove these because I, I don't want to use them anymore. Uh, we should, we are moving these to just define everything in uh, JavaScript. Uh, so we can remove these and key toggle attachment pane. We can use this ID, the key toggle attachment pane to define it up here. And the key toggle attachment pane has to be capital M. So now we can use, uh, key toggle attachment pane here instead of the access key because the access key is not used anymore and then the attachment bucket count is just right there which is perfect so now we have alt m blah 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 okay so now if we compile mac build doo -doo 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 -doo. open 
Okay. Yeah, we have capital M. And if we, because we remove the two keys, like the, the accelerator key is now, if we press Alt M, nothing happens. So it's great. Now we can implement a little bit of JavaScript to have a listener, like a global listener to the document, to the whole window. When the window initializes, we can add a listener to see hey, if the key press includes Alt M, just trigger the attach, just kick it in. Then we can deal with the uh, but like the uh, attachment buckets, the attachment container underneath in a saner way. Um, Alt M, yeah, this is great. I like it. I love it. So here we still have all the options. Yay! Cool. Let's continue. Do you guys have any questions? Ah, the chat is very quiet. Hello everyone, we have uh, 18 people currently watching. Hello everyone. Last session we arrived at 100 watching, which is insane. I don't know how that happened, but yeah, let me know if you have any uh, questions and comments below. Um, yeah. Cool, cool. You're so quiet, guys. Am I still live? <laughs> I don't know. Am I still active? Is my stream still active? Sometimes when there are no messages in the chat, I suspect that I've been like my my streaming just crashed and I've been talking alone to myself for like half an hour <laughs> without anyone interacting with me, which is very, very sad. Okay, so let's continue implementing a little bit of JavaScript. The JavaScript part of this whole implementation, it's interesting. Oh, first of all, we can delete this thing because we're not using this stuff. So we can remove these and we can remove it also from this button here. Yes. And also the attach button here. Uh, where is it? Attach button label, attach, oopsie, attach button label. Yeah, there you go. Can remove it from here and we can remove it from here. Beautiful. Okay. Another thing, I think it's pretty safe to say that we don't want the button at the bottom right. It's better to keep it as a toolbar button so the user can customize also the location of the button. So this is safe to remove, right? Yes, it's safer to remove. And we can also, yeah, let's keep the spacer. So we have the full spacer there and we have only the attachment location at the bottom. Yeah, that's perfect. Uh, Dan is still alive. <laughs> yeah, Muhammad. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. I was worried about you. Is everything okay? Yes. Okay, uh, 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 um. now we have the JavaScript side of things. And JavaScript here is a little bit messy because is the message compose command.js file, which is massive. We have 9,000 line of JavaScript, something mail context on Papa hiding. This is useless, it shouldn't be there, but 9,000 line of JavaScript. And these things happen <laughs> because uh, we have one single file to handle all the message compose things. And the message compose things are very complicated. And there are a lot of things. So like you can imagine a simple compose window. You have to manage all the type of addresses, uh, when the user uses accelerator keys, when the user attach some attachments, uh, all the toolbar buttons to uh, get a receipt, uh, encrypt the message, uh, format the text, just formatting, like just the simple thing of adding a, a, a table, adding an image, adding a link, all those things, like every single aspect of all those things is managed by a, a JavaScript method. So 9,000 line of JavaScript is not even that much, 
but we are improving this. We are trying to split things in, in multiple different views and multiple different files and having something more modular using JavaScript modules uh, to um, collect the commonly used methods and make it more um, modular and stuff like that. But yeah, in this case, we can start doing some, uh, let's see if we have already an add event listener uh, key press key press yes we have it on the label here for the creation of the recipient label or well, you don't have it a document usually we want to do a, like a document uh, add event listener stuff like that so when the messenger compose loads uh, load equal we trigger the compose load we can call we can check this function, compose load. In the compose load, we basically do everything. Yes, we define the attachment bucket. Uh, we trigger um, changes based on the preferences the user has. Uh, we initialize OpenPGP and set up the commands, blah, 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 all the good stuff. So at the bottom here, at the end of the message compose, we can do something. Uh, init keyboard shortcuts something like that so then we can have this method and for now let's leave it after the compose on load yes let's do an async function in it keyboard shortcuts and we're using an async because we have the ability with fluent to fetch all those keyboard accessibility shortcuts that we did, like the capital M, the control alt, all, all those stuff in an async way. So it's just, yeah, loads asynchronously. It doesn't potentially freezes the UI, even if you're on the same thread, we're not using multi-threading yet. In some cases we're using multi-threading, but in this case we're not. An async method, it's, it's, it's better. It shouldn't freeze the UI much, but all these things are like all these JavaScript calculation are done in a matter of like, a milliseconds so it shouldn't affect performance <laughs> hopefully <laughs> but we don't know we'll see okay the thing that i want to do here uh let me write some comment oh first of all js docs so define the uh compose window shortcuts and then here I want to do a bunch of things. First of all, uh, fetch the keys, the shortcut keys from the FTL file. Then uh, add key press event listener. And then here we should call the related methods based on the pressed keys. These are the three things that we have to do. Pretty straightforward. FBI, we got him because I'm hacking. <laughs> yes, I'm hacking an open source uh, <laughs> software and I'm also getting paid to hack an open source software. So yes, the FBI should be called. Ah, uh, all right, what are we doing here? So first we need to fetch the shortcut keys from the FTL file. And it's pretty easy because we're already, uh, we defined the shortcut key here the key toggle attachment pane in the messenger compose FTL. In the JavaScript file, we are already uh, storing that file in order to be usable as an async method with the xpcom. We are defining the lazy getter. So we are doing an asynchronous call to the FTL file here and we can use L10 compose. So if we do a little search, we see that uh, we get L10 compose file and it's, it's great. So we can use that. Another thing that we can check is the how we did it before, because I did it already. Um, show message security, this thing here, message security button, message header security. We did it already in a very good way. Yeah, there you go, format value, 
yeah, we can copy all of this good stuff because I don't want to repeat the same thing. So yeah, I'm lazy. All the developers are lazy. So uh, these are the three things that we need to do. So first of all, we define the shortcut. So in this case, define the first one is uh, attach key. And then we need to paste this one. This is the ID of the key that we define. So in this case, we're doing, we're storing uh, with the L10 compose, L10 compose. We are fetching from the messenger compose fluent file this key. We're formatting the values of this key and we're storing into the attach file. Perfect. So fetch the shortcut keys from the FTL file. And this is what we're doing. Perfect. Now that we have this key, we can add an event listener to the whole document. So whenever the user bo bo bo, um, Oh, shortcut. Oh, wow, Dan, you're good. Shortcuts. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. <laughs> you have good eyes, better than mine. Wow, you can read it. Oh, amazing. Thanks so much. Uh, attach key. Okay, so here we can define the key press of the whole document, and we're using an error function, so we're not changing the scope of this thing, which is great. Uh, we can trigger. So since all these shortcuts are will be based on an alt, so we are approaching these to allow the keyboard shortcut to work only if it's an alt plus combination of thing. So if it's not an alt plus whatever, we don't want to do anything. So the thing, the easiest thing that we can do instead of doing like a million different if condition, like if alt plus m, if alt plus s, if alt plus blah, 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 all this thing. We can do a simple if. In the event, we have the alt key, actually. If we don't have an alt key in the event, we just simply return because we don't want to execute any other code. If this is true, so we have an alt key, it means that the user is doing something and we can detect thing but we want to also go an extra mile and say if this is not true so we don't have the uh, uh, we don't have the all key and or we have event shift key or these two. Okay. So basically we are interrupting the execution of this key press if we don't have an alt key, so the alt key is not pressed or any other modifier is currently pressed because if the user presses control C, control M or control alt something else, it means that it's doing another type of keyboard shortcut. We don't want to trigger that because we're going to have here the, uh, tr uh, the trigger for the attachment, the trigger to focus uh, to the um, uh, to field, the CC field, the BCC field, but we're always and only going to do it by allowing the keyboard shortcut between alt and the keyboard name, so or the, the key name. So if or any of these other thing is pressed, we don't want to do anything because we don't want to interfere with uh, any other type of shortcut that the user might be using. So now here we can do a switch with the event key. And the event key, since we're typing alt and the attach key, we need to put it to lowercase. Because here, uh, the default, we don't do anything. Uh, because the attach key, we are fetching it, and the attach key, we define it as uh, uppercase, because that's usually all the 
um, accessibility keyboard are uh, sorry the accessibility keys are represented in the tooltips always uppercase but in this case the user because he's pressing only alt is not pressing shift is not actually triggering an uppercase key so we need to force it lowercase and in this case we can simply uh, trigger the opening of the uh, uh, upload file uh, the upload window and in this case command command attach file is the trigger here so if we check command attach file go to command attach file attach file we can use the attach file here we can trigger this oops not not cut <laughs> not cut just copy perfect so Uh, let's write a comment here for other developers so this might be easier to understand um, uh, interrupt if the alt key is not pressed or any other modifier a pressed perfect we we fa we stay also inside the 140 no what is that 140 characters limit yeah we, this is the limit where we do so uh, interrupt if the alt key is not press or any other modifier is press because we don't want to do anything perfect um here we could potentially say uh, alt plus m but even no, because these attached key might change, so it's fine. Uh, it's pretty obvious by like from the function name attach file what this method does, so it's it's gonna be fine. So we can Mac build now and see if the alt m works. Perfect. So run eighty characters. Danny calling. Yes, you're right. So new file, if we do alt M, boom, attach file, attach the file and the attachment pane works. If we do an alt, alt M, yes, alt M, yeah, it works, amazing. Okay, it was very, very simple JavaScript. So the thing that we have to do now, we have to define other, all the other uh, variations. So we need to, and I'm gonna write it here as a comment so I remember. So here now we need to um, implement a keyboard shortcut shortcut to toggle and focus on the attachment pane, which we lost. Then we need to uh, hide the attachment pane if no attachments are present and then oh we also need to add the attachment pane into the focus ring because we have a focus ring here but i think we broke it because uh, um, right here to give you uh, better accessibility, you can use the F6 to um, yeah. You can use the F. I'm, I'm pressing F6, so I'm scrolling through the main areas of the compose window. You can of course use Tab, but Tab just goes through all the um possible uh focusable elements and we don't want that because of course if you are also if you're focused on the message body and you keep tab 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 it's just yeah not gonna you're not gonna scroll through the focus ring but if you press f6 you're gonna scroll through the focus ring and if we have an attachment oh the attachment pane is visible this should be focused with the f6 so yeah, you can see 
if I'm on from, then I'm on to, then I'm on subject. And because we used to have the attachment pane in the header, the attachment pane is open and now it focuses. Yeah, now we have the focus here, but then it goes to the body. We don't want that. Of course, we want to put the attachment pane focusable after this. So, um, yeah. Uh, so we need to update the focus ring and be sure that everything works. So yeah, more work. Yeah. A lot of things, but at least it's working the approach. I think it's, it's a saner approach than what we had before, especially if I show you, uh, the, this thing, like the previous, like this is the old attachment thing. And it's, it's just there. like, look at that. So if I press. Alt M first, it opens the attachment container, even if it's empty and you have it in the header bar, which is just God awful. It's just, it's so cramped. Then if you press again, Alt M, it doesn't collapse the attachment bucket, but it opens the uploader, which is silly. But then if you don't upload anything, it just collapses. So it disappears. And then you can use also control shift a to upload, but it doesn't work on the editor. So if I'm focused on the other control shift a, it's, yeah, no, it's, it's just so silly. So I think we're improving things. Uh, let me write, let me read a bunch of comments. Can you hack my email, which I got scammed for? No, I'm sorry. I'm not that good. <laughs> Um, Danny said, don't trust JavaScript programmers. All they do is promises, but they never call back. That's a, uh, that's, that's not funny then. <laughs> yeah, that's very funny. Uh, Dan, uh, keyboard typo. Yeah, no, no, no. Thank you. Uh, Dan Simio, Simoica, Simoica. Uh, thank you for highlighting the, the typo. I, I write a lot of typos because I'm just like going fast and I'll, yeah. So thank you. Uh, it's okay. It's just a comment line. Uh, 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 yeah, no, no, it's totally fine. I don't mind. Actually, I also do these live streamings because I like when people correct the wrong things that I do, which is very, very funny. <laughs> it shows that I have no idea what I'm doing, but yeah, so we have these sync method that allows us to do await calls. Uh, we have a first uh, implementation of a document event listener and we have the toolbar button which I think it works it works nicely what do you guys think I don't mind having the attachment button there but then if you have attachments the attachment pane is at the bottom and you can collapse and it disappears of course this needs styling and the full bar is clickable right it's good. It's not bad. And of course, if you have multiple attachments here that it gets out of end, you can resize it like these. You can scroll it, of course, but you can resize it. All these attachments, you can interact with them. And then if you close it, collapse it, it remembers your the size of your attachment pane, which is very, very handy. I think like the other on in the header bar it was just so convoluted. So I think this is good. Yeah. Yes, boy, think so. And also the tooltip here, Alt M, yeah, this is good. Okay, so yeah, we're gonna continue working on this and improve it a lot in the upcoming live streaming sessions. Or I think I'm gonna keep working on this and then I'm gonna show you the final result and then we are gonna do something else. Probably in the next live stream, I'm gonna show you some test like you need test fixing or stuff like that but yeah uh okay i think we are almost at the end yes yeah, been almost one hour of live streaming oh 50 people i don't understand why in the first half hour am i doing these live streamings too early or too late because in the first half hour we have like 20 ish 15 20 people and then in the last half hour, I get 50 to 100 <laughs> currently three watching. Uh, so, yeah, Denny looks good. Definitely better than the current implementation. And thank you so much, Denny. You're always a positive guy and just uh, never saying a, a bad thing, which is it's good. It's good. It's fine.
Mm. Okay, so um, this weekend, uh, two new tutorials are coming out, a new tutorial about WordPress um, and another tutorial about Vala and GTK. Uh, and then uh, uh, next week, I'm going to release uh, an updated version of Akira because I've been working on that to implement a, a bunch of new stuff. So version 0 0.14 alpha is going to be released. Um, and then uh, what else? Yeah, every Thursday morning for me, every Thursday at this time, like an, an hour ago, I'm, I will be doing Thunderbird live streaming where I show source code. Um, Ankit asks, can you summarize? I'm new here. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm at the end. <laughs> Ankit, hello, welcome, Ankit. Uh, thank you for watching. I'm at the end of this live streaming. But if you want, at this time, next Thursday, every Thursday, I do this live streaming where I uh, show the source code of Thunderbird. I implement new things. I fixed errors and other things. So yeah, uh, this is what I like to do on Thursday morning. Um, leave a comment below in this video if you want me to work on something specific next time. So I think I'm going to start doing this because up until now, I just decide the same morning what I have to do, or what I'm going to work on. And I'm going to show you, I show you what uh, I, I like to work on. But if you want to see something specific related to Thunderbird, like how does the source code works in a specific section? How does the calendar works? Uh, if you want something implemented in Thunderbird, if you use Thunder, I hope you use Thunderbird. You should use Thunderbird. Uh, but yeah, um, if you want something implemented, if you're looking to start contributing, and if you're curious how to start hacking on Thunderbird, just leave a comment below in the video. Let me know what you want me to show you, what you want me to work on uh, the next live streaming. But yeah, I think I'm gonna stop this. We're going to end this right now, I guess. I don't know. Do you guys have any questions? No? <laughs> it's fine. It's a quiet morning. It's a quiet Monday morning. Mm -hmm. Is it okay? Okay, Dan said it's okay for Europe time. Yeah, I think it's... What time is it in Europe? I don't know. I want to learn how to hack emails and their password. Why? Because you're a bad person. Reverse God. I guess if you are have a nickname called Reverse God, it's a bad thing, right? Yeah, no, I don't teach that. I don't know how to do that. You shouldn't do that because it's not, yeah, it's not a good thing. You should learn how to make better emails and passwords. You should learn how to make better security. You should learn cybersecurity. Uh, it's good. Mattia, ciao, ciao Mattia. Grazie per, per esserti collegato. I don't know how to say thanks for watching in Italian. How do you say thanks for watching in Italian? <laughs> Grazie per uh, esserti collegato. Qui uh, non lo so. Uh, haven't, yeah, my Italian is, is, is I'm losing my Italian. Um, it's 9 p.m. in Europe right now. So you guys just had dinner, I guess. Lia Marta V. You make me cry. <laughs> what can you hack? Arig asked, what can you hack? My own computer. <laughs> I don't like... I, I can hack a source code that it's openly available for hacking. <laughs> um, or oh, reverse God, are you Italian? E parla italiano, cavolo. No, I don't speak Italian. I'm in Canada. Why should I speak Italian? Uh, it's... I moved to an English-speaking country to speak English. So, uh, just MITM. The person since email are almost never encrypted. Oh yeah, yeah, it's true. <laughs> okay, uh, I think I am gonna end this live streaming right now. Thank you so much, guys. Um, can you hack accounts? Seriously, I can pay. Tell me why you can hack. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you guys are silly. Uh, thank you, Mattia. Uh, 
English is French country. Yes. What well, French? <laughs> uh, it's, it's okay. <laughs> Quebec. Do we want to consider Quebec part of Canada? Come on, Danny. Come on. Um, but it's okay. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. Thank you for uh, connecting, interacting. Thank you all for writing in the chat. I hope you... I hope to see you again next Thursday at the same time to keep uh, improving and working on Thunderbird and making the best email client ever. There's a lot of work that needs to be done, but yay, we're going to do that. Okay, thank you so much, guys. And until the next lesson, as usual, happy coding. Bye.